Wow. Boa noite. Good evening. Two years ago, me and my wife, we moved from Amsterdam to Curacao. Now, this is the place where my mother was born and raised. This is an island that I've identified with all my life. And when we moved, my wife was almost eight months pregnant with our first child. So, as you maybe can imagine, a lot of people came up to us and said, guys, seriously? Do you know what you're doing? And our answer would, of course, be no. <laughs> because we didn't know what we were doing. We just had an idea that we believed in and that we acted on. Now, before moving to Curacao, we had been traveling a lot. We went to all these beautiful countries all across the world, but we never actually felt like these were places where we wanted to live. But Curacao was different. And it's not just because of the sun or the sea or the fact that you can have outdoor TEDx conferences, <laughs> even though that's really nice, of course. But to us, Curacao is not just any island in the world. It's the world in an island. I mean, come on. We have African rhythm. We have European buildings. We have Latin American charm. North American lifestyle. <laughs> and you top it off with a sauce, which is the sauce criollo. That's curious out of me. <laughs> we have a small island, of course, and a young island. We're only seven and a half years old. We only have, what is it, 160,000 inhabitants or so. But we have three official languages. We have more than 50 nationalities. So this is truly a diverse society. And one of the good things about diversity is that it makes us smarter, more creative, more innovative. It turns out that if you put a group of people together from different backgrounds, you get a much wider range of original and useful ideas compared to a group of people from the same background. And we know this to be true because, look around, this island is full of creativity. Look at the carnival costumes. Look at all the musical genres that were developed here. Look at street art. It's amazing. But I was a bit surprised to see that for most people in Curacao, creativity is something that they do besides their work. It's usually not their main source of income, except for some of the speakers tonight. And I thought, but why is this? Why don't we have more creative entrepreneurs? Now, in order to answer that question, of course, we need to know first and foremost what a creative entrepreneur is. Now, for me, a creative entrepreneur is someone who builds a business around his own creative talent and ideas. Sounds good, doesn't it? I mean, wouldn't you like to wake up in the morning and just play your guitar because you're at work? Huh? <laughs> Instead of going to work, come home and start playing the guitar at six or seven or after the kids have gone to bed. I know I would like to do that. So then I thought, well, okay, it is difficult. It's not easy to start your own business. And I was thinking about myself and how difficult it was for me to start my first very own business. I was living in Amsterdam a long time ago, working at a company. I didn't like the company at all. I hated it. And me and my colleague, we thought, you know, what these people are doing, we can do it too. We can do it better. Let's start our own business. And we had meetings, and we talked, and we talked, and we planned, and we talked, and for two years, and nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened. As a matter of fact, it took us until the very point that this company went bankrupt, we lost our jobs, and we had no choice whatsoever than to start our own business. So I know that there are a lot of reasons not to start your own business, because maybe you don't have the time or the resources or the money, or you're just scared. You're not prepared to smash the box. Or you're just way too comfortable with the life that you're living at that very moment. But what do you do? What do you do if you have this creative idea, this creative talent, in order to make it into a business? What do you do? Well, you need to have 
an entrepreneurial mindset. And this is not some business term, it's a way of life. It's about seeing opportunities, about finding resources, and about creating value. Repeat, repeat, repeat. And what does it take to develop this entrepreneurial mindset? Five things. First of all, believe in yourself. Okay, imagine this little girl and she goes up to her parents and says, Mommy, Daddy, I want to be an actress. And the father says, Oh, honey, that's really nice, but make sure you have a plan B in case it doesn't turn out. <laughs> now, if this little girl hears the same story over and over again about this plan B, do you think she's going to work on plan A? No, she's not. It's going to be plan B, and she's not going to become this actress. So we shouldn't think that we have to make others understand why we want to become creative entrepreneurs, but we shouldn't let them discourage us either. Second, you need to have the drive, because you're the creative entrepreneur. You are going to be having to do the work. Okay, you're the one who's going to design the app, make the song, edit the script, and you should forget about nine to five, because it might take a while before you get to this aha moment, when you see the light. So be prepared, work hard, sacrifice. I'm sorry, that's the way it is. Third, think big. Okay, we're on an island here, and a lot of times we think that we're limited. But the fact that the island is small doesn't mean that we're small. Don't look at the local market size and say, well, I've calculated this, it's not going to work. No, because there might be somebody at the other end of the world that is dying to see your product or service, but they just don't know who you are and how to reach you. So get out there and make use of this digital age. Get online and show them that you exist. Four, collaborate. Long time ago, I was working as a um, sales representative, and I was selling basically everything. I could sell water to a well, as some rapper <laughs> once said. <laughs> but I was also a musician on the side, you see, on the side. So I had to sell my music. This was way before Spotify. And um, I couldn't do it. I couldn't sell my own music. And why was that? It was because it was way too personal for me. It was my own art. And I couldn't take no for an answer because that would feel as a personal rejection. So what did I do? I found somebody who was great at selling music. We created a team. And it took off from there. So if you want to be a creative entrepreneur, make a list of the skills that are needed for your business. Make another list with your own skills and fill in the gaps. Five, start small. Be willing to try out new things, experiment, fail. If you fail, fail quick. Don't be wasting all your resources, all your money, all your time on this huge project. Make sure you can get feedback fast so you can learn and adapt. So these are the five principles. Now you're good to go. You can become this creative entrepreneur. And of course, to you, it's really important. Hopefully, to your family, it's also important, not a headache. But it's more than that. There's value in the work itself, and there's value for the country. And that's the reason why even if none of you want to become or be a creative entrepreneur, you should encourage this. Okay, the value in itself, the intrinsic value is that works of a creative entrepreneur are works of beauty, originality, genius. We all know the feeling. You go to a concert, you watch a movie, you listen to music. You're not just entertained. You're not even just amazed. You feel alive. It's a wonderful feeling. And for me, that's enough justification already to stimulate creative entrepreneurship. But there are more reasons. Because the work of creative entrepreneurs, it helps us to shape our national identity. You see, we tell the story of our country through creativity, imagination, and art. From the cave paintings at Nordkant, all the way to Tambu. From the architecture in the old city, all the way to Bobling. All these works give meaning to who we are today. And now's the time for us to adapt these collective stories and tell the story of the great creative nation that we be can become because we are already this great creative nation. More outward looking, 
more confident. Another reason, the creative sector can contribute a lot to our economic development. You see, we live in a globalized world with rapid technological development, and these affect Curacao very much. We have high unemployment rates, especially among young people. We're losing a lot of jobs through automation and outsourcing in different sectors, in banking, in finance, telecommunications, fast-moving consumer goods. But creative entrepreneurs are self-employed, and their work is the least likely to become automated. Just look around you, look at other countries, what they're doing. Let's take another island like Great Britain, a bit larger, but it's an island, part of the UK. In the UK, one in every 10 people is working in the creative sector. It's the fastest growing sector of their economy, and it generates $125 billion a year. Now, that's an example, right? Third reason, social cohesion. Okay, creativity helps us to look at the world through somebody else's eyes. It creates empathy, and it gives us a collective set of shared values and norms that we use in a society and that we're proud of and that we need also because of the fact that we're such a diverse population. I mean, look at all of you here. We're so diverse. We need to have positive encounters with others that don't look like us, that don't talk like us, that don't think like us, whenever we're working, whenever we're at school or in the neighborhoods, through creativity. And also, this creativity can help us a lot to maybe even tackle some of the social issues that we can't find answers for. Crime prevention, pollution, obesity. So how do we move on? How can we make sure that Curacao can become this this hub for creative entrepreneurs. I have to be honest with you. If you ask me, the best way to stimulate creative entrepreneurship here and anywhere is by providing everyone with an unconditional basic income. But I know it's not going to happen today or tomorrow. I'm for sure not in Curacao. So I'll leave that for the next TED Talk. <laughs> but in the meantime, our government should be aware of the importance of creative industries. We should have creative and cultural policies. We should make sure that everybody has access to creativity and that it becomes a mainstream element of our social and economic life. We should invest in digital infrastructure, regulation. We should make sure we get a, a culture of national innovation through incubator pro programs, through private and, and public partnerships. But most of all, we should actively support the craftspeople, the filmmakers, the designers, the photographers. <laughs> Education. <laughs> we talked about this, you know, before. Yeah. Education is also a key factor. We need to use our educational system to look at the needs of tomorrow's creative industries. You need to rethink the educational paradigm and, and focus on creativity, on culture, and on enterprise. All schools should have art education. And, of course, we should make sure that we develop creative thinking in every young boy and every young girl, regardless of their career choices. Now, what can we do? What can you do as an audience? Well, if you're, let's say, a financial expert working in a bank, you have a little cousin, your little cousin says he wants to be a creative entrepreneur, but he's really bad at math. Help him out with his budget plan. If you're that parent of the girl that wants to be an actress, don't protect her from her creativity so that she can work on plan A and that she can become an actress. And if you want to become a creative entrepreneur yourself, then tomorrow, for once, skip beach day. Don't go to Canepa Grande. Stay at home, get your piece of paper, write down your vision, start on Monday. If you need my help, let me know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>